unbothered, unleashed, and totally unscripted. It's Beyond the Roar with football head coach Eddie George. Welcome back to another great episode of Beyond the Roar. And I'm on with a very special guest, very near and dear to my heart, our special forces, also special teams coach, Coach Keith. Burns, <laughs> who also went to the other OSU, uh, someplace out in Oklahoma somewhere, uh, winner of two Super Bowls uh, with the Denver Broncos. Hey, man, you know, matter of fact, have we ever, have we ever played, played against each other? Have we ever met? Um, yeah, I think when I uh, first came to Nashville, I told you that hot, hot, hot day in <laughs> Vanderbilt. <laughs> it was when like, you melted. Uh, yeah, it was pretty much like probably one of the hottest games of my career when y'all first moved to Nashville. <laughs> it was preseason. We came in the preseason and actually um, had an opportunity to play against you, but uh, I don't know if I made a tackle or anything. I don't think but, you did. You know, yeah, was, I was probably was, out the first half. Exactly. I, I could probably, only thing I could think about was how hot it was. <laughs> so I think that was a disadvantage for us coming from Colorado in the altitude. But. Do you, do you you know, when we played in Vanderbilt that year, it stayed that hot up until, like, November? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, I definitely had an advantage. <laughs> we had an advantage, right? That was a different, <laughs> it was almost a different kind of heat. I mean, only time I've ever been in the game, you know, that hot, I think we played in It Tokyo. was like you could see the waves of heat. Yes, off coming off the, the turf. turf. And that was, was AstroTurf at yeah. the time. So, so it your was feet real. was burning. Oh, yeah. You, it, like, yeah. during warm, your feet was burning. Yeah. Yeah, man. But, yeah. hey. You know, when I first got this job, talked to Jeff, and I was putting the staff together, and he came with the brilliant idea of having just a special teams coach. And I was right. like, ooh, I said, man, that, ooh, that sounds like a plan. <laughs> you know how some coaches divide up the, the right. duties, but this is something that I wanted to have. I wanted to have strong a strong special teams play. Um, and so far – I have not been disappointed. I think there's definitely room to grow, but what you bring to the table, your enthusiasm, your knowledge, your love, your passion for the for the game itself, I appreciate it. Yeah. And I can see the growth in our special units team um, within that. Just kind of talk about your journey and why. Why are you so passionate about special teams? Um, I look at it as, you know, it's it's a way for me to be a team's guy. And when I say a team guy, you have to be selfless. And I what I've always been told and I tell a lot of people, you know, as I've gone through this journey is, you know, playing special teams is not for everybody. And when I say that, you're asked to do things that a regular football player or a starter is not really willing to do. You know, you have to go out and sacrifice your body a lot of times for the greater good of the team. So, you know, and if you, you know, me being an All American in college, you know that was all good and dandy. But oh, I've always all tell people, you had to throw that out. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. You yeah. slide oh, yeah. at it <laughs> because, <laughs> right, because right, right. you have a lot of those that come out of the college ranks. You know, with a lot of accolades, but at the same time, when you get in the NFL, it's like, okay, where can you find your niche at? You know, mm -hmm. and for me, fortunately, I was able to find my niche playing special teams. I would played in short yardage packages, goal line packages, and, you know, if somebody went down, I was able, you know, to play all three linebacker spots, and that showed my value. But I always had the mentality that if I wasn't going to be a starter and all they were going to do is let me play special teams, I was going to be the best at it. Mm -hmm. And that's when my mindset changed, and I put it in my mind that, okay, if this is all that I'm going to do, I'm going to be the best at it. And when I say the best at it, I was going to be unblocked because I think that is a mindset and a willingness to go out there and do whatever I need to do for the greater good of the team. And that's basically sacrificing my body at times, you know, going down there, knocking the crap out of people, um, basically, you know, making sure I get all my blocks and not, you know, blocking people in the black in the back or anything like that. But it's actually going out and being a selfless person because you're asked to do things that, you know, not only a lot of people can't do, but a lot of people aren't willing to do. But I'm willing to do whatever it took for us to win games because I'm a sore loser. Um, I'm proud to admit that yeah, so because losing is not something that I'll ever get used to. And that's something that I've always tried to preach, not only to the guys that I'm coaching now, but throughout my life. Um, at the same time, I never looked at it as, you know, was I going to be one of those guys that have the jerseys hanging up in the store or anything like that? That really didn't mean anything to me. But to be able to say that I could play with the best 
in the world. Mm-hmm. That was a challenge that I was willing to take on. So, and people always ask, you know, well, how was it playing with, you know, the guys that I played with, but the guys that I played with actually gave me, you know, inspiration and, you know, they actually acknowledged the things that I was actually doing in the kicking game, you know, whether it was kickoff, kickoff return, punt, or punt return. Even I was on field goal block when um, uh, Jason Elam actually kicked a 63-yard of field goal at the time. So um, you're always in part of the team, but actually at the same time, you take it upon yourself to find your niche. And that's what I did. So now that I'm coaching the game, I actually try to, coach guys the way that I played the game. And the way that I played the game was with a lot of passion, a lot of enthusiasm. And I tell cats now that if you're willing or you're looking to wait to see if your jersey is going to be in the bookstore or anything like that, that is not why those are not the type of people that I want on the team. Mm -hmm. I want guys to go out there and have a lot of want to have a lot of passion and a lot of love for the game. And my main three things that I always look for in guys who want to be on special teams is trust, commitment, and care. Because if I can trust you, I can put you out there. That's right. If you care about what you're doing, you know what I'm saying, you will take pride in what you're doing. If you're committed, that means anything that I put on your plate, you're willing to do. So that's mm-hmm. the mindset that you have to have, those three things. And I always tell the guys, it's not all about football because those three things can carry you a long way in life. Mm-hmm. You know, I said, even if, you know, and I always tell the guys, even if you're dating girls, Right. You know, if you can trust her, is she committed to you or does she care about you? If uh, those three things are what you see in her, it could carry you a long way. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, even yeah. at a job. Yeah. If your boss can trust you, he shows that you care and you're committed to the job, you can go get whatever you want done. So mm-hmm. it's not only about football that I'm teaching the young guys. Right. It's also about life. And, you know, I carry those three things. A coach told me that a long time ago. But those three things will carry you a long way, mm. not only on the football field, but in and life. also in life. So if you were to create, if you had an opportunity to say, okay, here, on, the, on this table you have body parts, right? Mm-hmm. If you could create the perfect special teams player with certain body parts, who would they be? <laughs> would it be Steve Tasker's head? Would it be, uh, uh, you know, would it be uh, – Roby's leg, punting leg. What would right, that? What would that right. look like? Um, if I had a kicker, I would, I would, I would use Jason Elam's leg because I trust that leg. I've been around that leg for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say yes. I would say uh, S- Steve Tasker's head. <laughs> um, I would say uh, strength would probably be uh, Brendan Am- um, Ambadejo. Oh, from um, Baltimore. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. I would probably um, take. His physique and his strength, because, you know, I think I like the way that he played. Adelius Thomas, um, mm, size. Yes. Um, and I would definitely put my heart in there because the reason I would put my heart, because I was willing to do any and everything that it took, you know. And like I said, I always preach team. But, you know, when you preach team, it's almost like family. Mm. And to me, my mom has always told me that, you know, sometimes family is all that you have. And I always looked at football growing up as pretty much all that I had because that allowed me to be able to get myself out of certain situations. And I always tell my kids now, you know, I have three kids, uh, two girls and a boy, and I've always told them I would never want them to have to grow up the way that I Mm. grew up. So that was enough for me to want to instill not only in my kids, but the kids that I teach now and the kids that I coach now, you know, having it, having that way. But that would be my ideal special teams player for me. And I think um, I'm still looking for 11 of those guys to put out there on the field on Saturday. (laughs) But at the same time, if I could put one special teams guy out there, I think it would be composed of those guys. Hey, that's that's a hell of a player right there, (laughs) the hell of a player. Um, how would you describe your coaching style? I mean, you, you, you <laughs> you're, you're a very passionate guy out there. Right? Um, <laughs> how would, you describe, how would I describe my yeah. coaching style? I would say hard but fair. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. You know, I, um, I call it, uh, it's a, it's a small menu with a big understanding. Mm. You know, I think we have to have a foundation. Mm. Um, I think if you have a foundation, you can build anything on it. But at the same time, if you don't have a foundation, anything you put on it will crumble. Um, So I started with the basics. I stripped our special teams down to the bare bones. I knew everything that I told was telling them was new to them. 
and I had to slow walk it. But at the same time, they're starting to come around to understand how important the kicking game is when it comes to lining up on Saturday. I mean, I don't, I don't, um, I don't put up with a lot of uh, mistakes or a lot of BSing around because anytime you're in between those lines, it's, uh, it's more like a doggy dog type world, a survival of the fittest, especially mm-hmm. playing in the kicking game. It's one of those things where it's an attitude and it's a mindset that has to be right or you will physically get yourself hurt on Saturday. So I try to tell guys we have to protect ourselves at all times, but my coaching style is um, I want you to be uh, disciplined but crazy and and be able to play under control um, but with intensity that a team is not willing to match on every Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. what I feel that like I bring to the table as yeah. a coach, and um, hopefully, you know, the guys go out there and represent on that yeah. on and Saturday. I, I, and I think I think we're getting there. In certain <laughs> certain areas, <laughs> right, <laughs> we, right. we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> what were your initial thoughts on on one particular player? I know you love him, Antonio <laughs> Zita. Um, he's he's going to be. He, I think he's he's one of those guys that has to probably um, you know get out of his own way at times. I think you know. He worries about a little bit too much going on off the field than he does mm-hmm. on the field. I mean, he's very talented. Um, you know, it, all of my specialists are great guys to work with. Um, and this being my first, you know, college job, it's it's very interesting, you know, learning their the ins and outs and the way that they go about their routines and trying to do things. So me being at the pro level, I'm always trying to teach them and coach them as a professional would do it. And – you know, with anybody who has aspirations of getting to that next level, I think he's a guy that, you know, is talented enough to be at the next level, but there's a process that you have to follow. So I think, you know, um, everybody was enamored with him kicking that 62-yard game winner um, last year, which was good, but I understand. But at the same time, I always tell him that you're only as good as your next kick. So at the same time, as far as that goes, he's hard on himself. And I'm hard on him, too, but I always want the best for him. And Mm -hmm. as we continue throughout the season, I think that's exactly what we'll get. Yep. Okay. Well, we want to go to halftime. That's our halftime ding. And uh, with that being said, we want to give a TSU fun fact question. Are you ready for it? (laughs) I think so. All right. I'm going to cover the answers. I don't want you cheating. (laughs) Get them glasses on. How many conference titles has TSU football won? Um, have they ever changed conferences, for one? How many conference titles has TSU football won? Have they always been in the OVC? How many conference titles has <laughs> TSU football question, won? I'm going to go with uh, six. Teen. Sixteen. Wow. Sixteen wow. conference titles. So we're going to go a little personal here, man. Uh-oh. All right. Get to, get to know... Okay, what's your nickname, first of all? I don't have a nickname. You had you had a nickname. I had. Yeah. Um, let me see. What was your nickname? Well, when I was in the league or? League like or? growing up? Growing up when you, uh, you're a proud Omega man. I mean. Um, yeah, my line name was Black Dog. Black um, Dog? Yeah. <laughs> why, why is that? I wonder why. I don't know. I don't um, either. I don't see where they could possibly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but they came up with that. So it kind of really stuck. Really? I it kinda, like it, it though. Stuck. It kind of I stuck. like it. Black's a good color. <laughs> a great color. Um, you, You're a man that is always thinking you're, you're um, in fact, I didn't know this about you. You're a comedian. Wow. You did a, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you got comedic chops. You had to do a couple stand-ups here and there. You're friends with Dave Chappelle, among others. Right. Um, and as a comedian, you're always thinking of material. So what, today, specifically, right now, what's what's on your mind today? Um, The mere fact that I came in here, there was no chance <laughs> to sit down. <laughs> um, I'm just joking. But um, um, I don't know. Um, For me... I think I, I kind of got it from my mom because, um, you know, it's something that, you know, she always told me when I was little that, you know, it's always better to laugh than cry, mm-hmm. but there's nothing wrong with crying. So, um, but me, I think I've been telling jokes probably since I was like five years old. Really? And, um, you know, it's something that I've always taken upon myself to 
you know, actually do my homework at times, you know, um, before I ever stepped on a stage before I actually, um, you know, took some time out. I would go down to like, you know, open mic night and just sit in and, you know, see how comedians carry themselves and, you know, working on material. So I was like, oh yeah, it's, it's doable. And mm -hmm. I was actually challenged one time by a beat writer about going on the stage. Cause I, of course, you know, we're in a locker room, how, you know, how that is. And, you know, you're, you're laughing and it was like, okay, you think you're so funny. Why don't you try going on the stage? And he said it like, as if I was scared, like I would back down. I'm like, no, I mean, if you set it up, I'll go down there and we'll see what mm -hmm. happens. So that was the first initial time that I'd ever gotten on stage to do a set. And I mean, I didn't understand going into a green room, just hanging out with comedians and, you know, just talking to see, you know, how they got their start and stuff like that. But it was actually amazing. But I stepped out there on the stage. I didn't know that he was going to put it online and let everybody know that oh the linebacker for the Denver Broncos was actually going to <laughs> go on stage <laughs> at open mic good. night. So I walk on the stage. <laughs> it is standing room only, you know. So my teammates, of course, are there. And um, they wanted to see, uh, you know, how I was going to do. But actually, um, some of the comedians actually thought that I did a good job. I mean, I came out strong and I ended strong. That's and how you do it. That's how you do it in a set. So it was not surprising to me. It was just the mere fact that I was actually on the stage for the first time, which mm. is crazy because you can't really see anything past the first row yeah. because the lights are right up in your face. And, you know, so you're really kind of just hearing, you know, whether they're laughing at your jokes. And, of course, you know, you may have a heckler, you know, in the audience here and there. But, you know, my set was only three minutes, so... Mm. It didn't last long, but at the same time, it felt good being out there. It's a different atmosphere. It's just a different, you know, feel, you know, and knowing who your crowd is, yeah. you know, carries a lot of weight. But I had a great time doing it, and then I actually um, opened up for um, Ashley Larry. Um, he was on the Dave Chappelle show yeah. with um, Donnell Rollins. Um, actually, we grew up together. I mean, you know, he's a... Uh, He's around the same age as my sister, but we grew up in the same neighborhood. So I actually bought him to Colorado mm. one time. So I just opened up for him. You know, I had like, you know, maybe like a 15 minute set. So it's not something that I haven't, you know, done on the regular, but you know, you know, then, now, you know, we're going to get you to do one <laughs> set. You got now you know, you got to do that before the season's out. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you, you two know. weeks to get ready. I wouldn't even need that much. Uh, how much Trust time do you need? All right, 20 minutes. I got enough material. <laughs> I've, been here, I've been here 20 minutes. So, so you got enough material? I've been here less than two months, so I got a rack of material right now. <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, I'm pretty much good. So whenever. So, so that they stay in the same vein. Who uh, Name your top five all-time comedians. Oh, that's easy. Um, I would go with Eddie Murphy. Not in no order. I would mm -hmm. say Eddie Murphy, Bernie Mac, mm -hmm. Martin Lawrence, yeah. uh, Cedric. And the last one would probably be Red Fox. Are you a reader? Um, when my wife makes me. <laughs> when she makes you read. Yeah, but I mean, I've I've become more of a reader than because I'm here, you know, by myself. So mm -hmm. I try to pass the time, whether we're on the bus riding or you know, if I'm not taking a nap, you know, I'll knock out, you know, like a couple of chapters, depending on you know. What, what are you I'm currently reading? reading? Um, get out of my bed. Um, I can't think of uh, – awesome. it's a book, actually, our defensive back coach, Richard McNutt, gave oh, yeah. to me, so I'm actually reading that. What's, what's, right it, what's it about? Um, it's just about his his journey to um, – it's a guy's journey to where he came from, the way he sees Christ and the way Christ sees uh -huh. him. So it's um, it's a small small read, but um, I think it, you know, it, it gives me peace and, you know, allows me to go to my spiritual place at times when – you know, I'm not doing the football thing yeah. because right now I'm always do a different animal. about it. But, you know, it can always find, I always find time for the Lord himself That's because right. he's blessed me so much to be able to do the things that I've done and the things that I'm continuing to do. So, you know, I, I have to always give him his praise and his glory. Uh, so, amen. Amen. No, mom, no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> so what song will always, I think I know the answer. I know the answer to this one. What song will always get you on the dance floor? Song, yeah. Uh, oh, that's Atomic Dog. Atomic Dog yeah. always get me on the dance floor, <laughs> uh, and I'm not even on the dance floor that much. But it's something about that song that 
brings the best out of me. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm, I'm getting up there in age. I don't know about the party hops and, you know, the spins and all that now. But, you know, back in my day, could I could spin? set it out. Oh, yeah, I could set it out. That was when I was really, really on the yard. I yeah. was out. Yeah, well, well I'm, I'm, I'm relatively new <laughs> to that and uh i have yet to do a donkey kick oh, it's not wow. easy no? yeah it's not easy it's but a different animal i mean at this age i don't know i gotta might have to tape my wrist and some more <laughs> i don't know but uh it's knee <laughs> sleeves and uh, all of that uh, all of that yeah, yes yeah. tiger but, bomb and all that exactly all right man so listen we're gonna go on the two minute uh rapid fire question all right okay okay i, I know you're a foodie i love you love to eat you mentioned it on the way in here. If you ain't no food in here, yeah. so yeah, got you. So if you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, that's easy. Tacos. Tacos. Yeah. Ketchup or sauce on the tacos? What? You said ketchup? Yeah. Who would do so, that? I mean, people. some people put ketchup on their tacos. That's food abuse. Okay. But, I'm just saying. I mean, I ain't never heard of that. No. Yeah. I'm wow. just saying. No. Simply no, sour no, cream, ketchup. No, ain't nobody putting no ketchup on no tacos. Ketchup, it's ketchup and hot sauce. No. Dog, I'm telling you. Don't dog. do it. All right. I can't well, believe you even said that. I'm just saying, I don't do it. But I've seen people, it's a debate where people like to put ketchup on their tacos. I've never heard somebody. Is, you think that's ketchup? Is That might be taco sauce. No, ketchup. Or salsa or something. Ketchup. Never. California, I, I guarantee nasty. you, if you ask anybody from L.A., if they put ketchup on their tacos, it's like, yeah. That's bad. Hey, uh, but I'm they do saying. mostly fish tacos out in California, though. They're I'm not talking really about the, the right, the taco meat, dog, with the, the shell oh. and the lettuce, well, the cheese, taco. Wrong. That's Telling a violation. That's a food violation. No, I'm just saying, you know, hey, teach his own. Yeah, you're right. Would, would you rather go to the movies or watch the movies at home? Um, I'm more of, I could do movies at home um, because... Here's a fun fact. I actually, my kids used to be so embarrassed. I would always, like, if I'm going to watch movies at home, mm -hmm. I would go to the theater and get the theater concessions, oh, concessions? and leave. <laughs> <laughs> I know that sounds so hood. <laughs> that's but, why I said ketchup but, on the damn taco no, fits you. No. no. Yeah. I would never I mean, put ketchup that's, on the taco. That's ketchup on the taco. That's, have, that's that behavior. Oh, I used to do it all the time. I would go get a large bucket of popcorn, some nachos, some you know, candy, and I would walk directly back out the <laughs> building and go get in the car and go home and watch a movie. My kids used to be like, so they would just laugh, and but they would actually eat it too. Yeah, they would have a problem. They would laugh it, at it, but they would all that eat. They would funny. have no problem. <laughs> <laughs> they would have no problem eating it, but right, they right, were right. so embarrassed. And when I would do it, because I would just go in there, I wouldn't buy a ticket or nothing. I go straight to the concession stand, walk right back out of there, get in the car. <laughs> but they look home. at you crazy. Oh yeah, my kids or no. the people. People? The people. Would look oh, no. Person? They wouldn't know what I was doing. They didn't know whether I was coming or going. So it didn't matter to them. Right, right, You know, right, so, right. but I would go home and just sit there, watch a movie What is it about the, 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 I guess, the concession food that oh, those you must, want the Oh, those are must-have. Yeah, those are must-haves. I, I mean, if you, you got that, you know, Lord has blessed me to actually have a movie theater now in mm -hmm. my home. So I actually have my own popcorn popper. So it's nothing for me to do that now, but to go before I, that occurred it was nothing for me to go are you a popcorn, popcorn connoisseur or, or um, you just I, like i would say i used to butter? be i was no i would say i used to be um i love cheese popcorn cheese better popcorn. than um the regular movie popcorn but i can always settle for that you like the, the sour apple flavor type or the cherry what? like you ever see popcorn? that yeah oh no like they're having in Chicago. Yeah, in nah, Chicago, yeah, I've, yeah, I've, yeah, yeah I've, with I've the caramel seen it. Yeah, and the nuts do no that. i don't I'm do just, that i can't either yeah i can't do that yeah my thing is Peanut M and M's and popcorn, the salt and sweet mixture. No, I throw some peanut. No, 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 not not at all. No, that's not me. You gonna do why one or funny? the other? I mean, I, why? Because you only gonna do one or the other. How can you do both? You can do both. I mean, you, I put peanut M and M's in with the popcorn, that's so you get the food salt. Violation. How is that? Nah, nah. You can ask any sane person. Sweet, sweet and salt together is a perfect combination. I'm telling that's, you. Uh. Um, yeah, I can't really say what I want to say right now. But <laughs> no, that's hey, you not can, it. You can, don't no, bleep it out. No, that's not it. That 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 is not a good combination. Nothing. M and M's. Do and, they sell it like that? Where do they sell see. popcorn and M and M's together? At the concessions, you just put not together, but you exactly. get it separately. That's exactly why, because you're but, supposed to eat. But you have seen gourmet, but you can see you have seen gourmet popcorn places where they have the s'mores with yeah. marshmallows and popcorn, and you yeah. got the. Well, where they where they put cheese like cheese and popcorn? 
That's easy. That's uh-huh. just two different things. You just. But well, then it's the same thing. It's no, M and M's. You're not eating off the cheese, and then you got popcorn over here. I mean, it you sprinkle as cheese popcorn. No, it, it, but you can get M M&M and M popcorn too. Like, Where? The, at the gourmet place. So that there, do you have gourmet it. place? Yeah, the gourmet I, I spot. Can't, yes, I can't you can. go up in there. That sounds bougie. Okay, well, okay, you're bougie then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what would you? Would you? What would you do if you were invisible for a day? Wow, if I was visible for a day, I don't know. Probably enter a bank. Quick. That'd be my first option. I would go straight to the bank, clean them out. But would the money show? The money would show. Yeah, yeah. Money ain't invisible. Oh, you. you just have to catch me if you can. Uh, but that would probably be the first thing I could do if I was invisible for a day. Yeah, I probably would uh, go straight to a bank and take a lot of money out, and then probably divide it up, give it to some churches and some people um, who are you know not well off. Uh-huh. But, uh huh. It'd be God's work. But It'd be God's work. Do. Oh, no question. So you wouldn't keep a no dollar question. of it. No, I would just go. To. You just know, go and give it to other people. Oh yeah, because I know they would benefit more from it than I would. I would need it. Such a good man. You would go steal but that's from a, quick a bank way to get, and get it. No, I didn't say steal, because can't nobody see me. How is that stealing? They don't even know. They'll who see it the is. money walking out the bank though. Somebody's stealing the money. Who is it? You. That's the only. That's only because you know. <laughs> but, but but you you would be stealing the money. That's you not. Know, no, how, it you, how, what is it then? I would look at it as me doing a good deed. It's <laughs> like Robin Hood. I would look at it as Robin Hood, modern day Robin Hood. <laughs> modern day Robin Hood. Oh yes, sir. All right. I mean, that's hey, how I would look at it. Well, we gonna Robin Hood up out of here then. <laughs> hey, that's that's another great episode of Beyond the Roar with myself and Coach Keith Burns, also Black Dog. Hey man, it's been a pleasure, man. Until next time, see you then. Appreciate it.